Good morning everybody and welcome to another project. So in the last video I showed you how to build an event driven uh, event driven batch oriented pipeline meaning anytime you know events are inserted into the raw zone we were forwarding it into an SQSQ through S3 events and we were using glue job where we were polling the queue and basically you know processing data this video i want to show you a step further now let's uh, rule out the batch oriented let's process real time meaning as that new file arrives in the raw zone event will forward that s3 event will forward into an sqs and in and in almost real time i'm using the word almost because the cadence is less than about a one minute almost in uh, real time the file will be processed and you will see uh, everything happening so this is what we're going to build in this project and um, hopefully uh, should be similar from the last video again new files will be added on s3 we are going to forward those files into an sqsq from there we'll have a glue streaming job a spark streaming job which is going to ingest the data which is going to pull the queue grab all the messages and then perform an upsert or insert on a transactional data lake so i hope you guys are excited there's a lot to learn here so let's get started so the first thing i would need is an s3 bucket so i'll come on uh uh, S3 bucket and I'm gonna click an S3 bucket and I'm, I'm gonna name it JD Data Team Sandbox UA Dev. You can name it anything that you like. Click on create bucket. I have an S3 bucket to play with. Now head over to the SQSQ and click on create queue. We're gonna name this queue as, let me see what name did I give in my notes. So I'm gonna quickly come to datagen.py. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna uh, give this queue a name called Customer raw events because uh, as uh, files are added on S3 into the raw zone, events are forwarding into an SQSQ. Um, uh, again, so here we're going to name it customer raw event queue. Okay, you can name it anything that you like. Come down, click on create queue. Once the queue is created, now click on the queue. Copy this ARN. Did you see this ARN? Copy that. Now, what you want to do is this is a policy that is given to you. Simply come here and replace the ARN over here make sure to put your s3 bucket and your aws account id now once that is done copy this okay head over back go to the access policy edit and then just dump this here scroll down and click on save perfect so we have an s3 bucket we have a queue right now what we gotta do is basically you will be given a python file called datagen.py this generates some fake data into the customer into the raw zone so i'm just gonna run it once to show you so if I refresh here, you can see a raw zone, a customer table and some files here to play with, which means now we have an S3. Now we have an SQS. Now we need to patch them. Um, basically, we need to add. Um, so anytime you put anything into S3, you want to forward this into an SQS queue. So that process looks pretty similar. Go to the root directory, go to the properties, scroll down. Uh, you will see something called create event notification. And here say. I'm calling event processor customer. You can call it anything that you like. Um, and then for the prefix, we're going to use this prefix, meaning I want to only listen for events into this particular folder and when the file format is JSON. OK, now we're going to come here and click on put files, which means I am interested uh, whenever a new file is in, uh, inserted into the raw zone. After all of that is done, scroll all the way down into an SQSQ and click on choose queue, uh, choose from your SQSQ. Select it, click on save changes. And congratulations, now you have successfully uh, created a rule which will forward all the events from the raw zone. I mean, all the files uh, that are inserting in the raw zone into an SQS where the, where the items will be nicely buffered. Now it's the fun part that is uh, through glue streaming job, we're gonna ingest the data in near real time. So let's get started with that part. So uh, the streaming part is pretty actually straightforward. I'll be, I will be walking you over the entire code base uh, shortly. So let me uh, collapse this. This is a glue job, which is gonna process our data in near real time. First, we gotta get the queue URL. This is the queue URL. I'm gonna copy this and paste this in my main function over here. Again, I do have a complete return guide as well. If interested, you can follow that as well. All right, so now let's understand what's going on. So I will explain me. All right, so here we have a queue. We have a class called Polar where we pass in the queue URL. While true, meaning, uh, you know, keep listening. Polar.get messages. So we're going to get the messages based on the batch size. Uh, if you don't provide the batch size, the default batch size would be about 10. If not messages, which means if you do not have any messages, sleep for 0.2 seconds 
and then pass meaning keep listening right uh, no messages to process a uh, process I, I think i should remove exiting all right else we call a, a function called process message and once the message is processed we do polar dot commit meaning the message that you successfully process delete them from the sqs queue so if i go to polar uh, if i go to sorry if i go to process message here you can see a try catch here i have a array uh, called batch files and what I do is basically I, I iterate over the SQS messages I grab the S3 files and I append it into uh, uh, an array called batch files now over here I simply check if the file is not equal to empty then I create a spark data frame I, I print the spark data frame and I absurd that into a Kodi transactional data lake and guys bear in mind this is happening real time period right as soon as you insert a file, it gets into an SQS, the glue job picks up, it, perform, it reads the data, performs the upset. It's real time, okay? And now, again, if you have a lot of, uh, if let's say your producer are producing message at a very rapid rate, uh, it's, it's in the queue, right? You can configure the batch size, you know, you can grab more files, you can grab la less files, you can play with those numbers is all I wanna say. All right, so code, pretty straightforward. Again, nothing crazy, right? Now, what we need to do is head over to glue, uh, paste your code over here. So I will probably paste my code, click on save. Uh, go to job details and now make sure the job is Spark Streaming, Glue 4.0, Python 3, Worker, um, for the demo I'm using G.25x, but you have larger, um, if you have file bigger files coming and if you need more power, uh, bump, bump that guy up, okay? All right, so with that being said, come on the, all the way on the bottom section and two parameters, data like format as SUDI and the configuration as Spark, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So now if I go to my queue, I do not have any messages, right? And if I go to the raw zone, okay, now we're gonna start this uh, job. So hopefully everything worked fine. And uh, let me make sure there's no silver zone. There's no silver zone right now, perfect. So I'm gonna start this, all right. So the streaming job has begun now, and now I will uh, run the Python file datagen.py. This is generating data at a rapidly rate, as you can see. Uh, I, I'm just gonna say 100, and I'm just gonna add a sleep here for a second. All right, so we are gonna continuously publish data into S3. All right, look at that, that's working fine. And um, now what you would see here is uh, in the SQS, as you can see, these messages are coming up in the SQS, right? Now my glue job is also running, right? So if I go to the card view, if I try to open up the logs, hopefully, and I, I'm able to show you that, right? Uh, all right, so if I come here, and if I wait for a couple of minutes over here, I should see that Spark data frame. Um, uh, shortly. So again, messages are uh, being buffered into the SQS queue as new files are inserted into S3. As you can see, you know, bam, 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 we are inserting files into S3 through events. We are forwarding, again, the numbers are reducing because the glue will process them. Hopefully if I show you the first one, the rest would be pretty straightforward. Yes, I just gotta be a little patient here. Uh, usually, uh, once you start the job, it takes about a minute or so to start um, the Spark executors, right? So let's wait, let's be a little patient here. Uh, oh yeah, here you can see, we see the Spark data frame, now the glue has started processing. Uh, again, as you can see, it's it's processing uh, data in uh, near real time uh, from the SQSQ, as you can see. Messages will uh, surely start decreasing as glue, uh, you know, will pick up more and more messages. So yeah, and now let's go to the S3. If I uh, refresh and here you can see a silver zone, we have successfully processed the data in near real time. Here you can see the state, uh, Huri metadata and some base file or the parquet files. So what you have just seen is a real time processing, right, solution. So again, uh, a great solution, event driven solution, as new files are added, uh, you know, you are basically gathering all the keys into a queue, you're buffering that, uh, right? And then uh, you're you're us using a poll mechanism, so you're polling the queue, right? And then grabbing the messages in batches, and once one batch is complete, then you say commit, or because you gotta delete those files uh, from, from the queue, right? 
So great solution. This solution could also be applied to EMR. So say you want to process data real time, right? And you have your EMR cluster serverless or you know, manage one. Uh, you can create a queue and you can set up this solution. It would work flawlessly. All right, that's all for the video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have any further question, let me know. All the code could be found on my GitHub section. So please make sure uh, to go to the GitHub and check the code out. I do have an article as well. So please make sure to read the article if needed. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you in the next video.